Welcome to Options Brew TV. Our guest, Jason DiLorenzo. How are you, Jason, from uh, Damn Funds? Ad Damn. Ad I did damn. it. That was good. That yeah, was pretty that was, good. That was pretty close. Like. That's pretty good. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. So for, for everyone else, who this is Jason's third time on the show um, in this series. So he, we did one episode on variance risk premium. We did mm -hmm. a second one on gamma hedging. And this third one is something called uh, Vanna. Okay. Or Vanna. I think it's probably Vanna, like Vanna White or something like that. Yeah, it's a made up Greek by us option people. Right. It's a made up Greek. So it's, we probably would con consider this a second order Greek, right? Something like that. How, how would you describe it? Uh, well, I think it's second order, but it's second order respect because it's not uh, the second order of Delta. It's Delta related to volatility. So, right. So the, yeah, this is probably something that most folks don't have access to it on their platforms. So, you know, I haven't seen a lot of platforms that show uh, Vanna exposure. Um, but it'll be interesting to understand this. So, um, right. I think, I think, I think we're going to find some, some cool things about this. So yeah. let me, let me turn it over to you, Jason. Let's go through it and, and see what we look like with Vanna. All right. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And so again, this is a third part in a series in which what we're exploring is the impact of the dealer's positioning on the market. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like we said, the first two variance risk premium, which is the premium that is built into the option pricing that is basically paying for convexity. Mm -hmm. um, if you are how buying would you describe, a call. Sorry, Jason, how would you describe convexity? What, what, do you, what does that mean to the, to the retail trader? The retail trader. So when you buy a call as a retail trader, you have a fixed risk, Okay. but you have an infinite possible return. And because of that, dynamic, um, which is kind of a gamma dynamic, because as when you buy a call, as the underlying goes along with your position, you gain more than in percentage terms, you gain more than what the actual stock is performing. So, if, you know, you have a $426 uh, SPY right now, mm -hmm. and you buy a 440 call for this Friday, mm -hmm. um, you'll notice as it approaches 440 in percentage terms, you're gaining more than what the stock, than what the underlying gives you. Right. That's called convexity because okay. you are gaining. Yes. You're gaining more as it has. So it, it is a gamma effect. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to pay for that, the dealer on the other side has to be compensated. And so they charge you a premium about a 5% or so premium uh, over a month period in order to, compensate for that gamma effect okay yeah understood so we're, we're going to do another episode we're not going to do it here and we're going to take a, a real example of uh, to show that convexity it's it's actually fairly important to understand or see mm -hmm. um because you could you could technically have a 50 delta option that doubles over a much smaller move in the underlying exactly right? and we'll show we'll do that on another episode and show some examples yeah. okay great so that's that's a, that's a good answer to convexity um mm -hmm. all right let's move on to vanna sorry i'm sorry for that little no 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 it's good it's good um so uh as again just as a quick review dealers uh market makers option market makers whatever you want to call them are the largest holding positions in options in the market mm -hmm. so in order to see how and and also options as we showed in my first lecture is a one of the primary drivers of the market today mm -hmm. so if you have a primary driver and you can identify the group that are the largest holders of those it is very valuable to try to figure out what their position is especially since dealers are very robotic they are you know they're very uh regimented in how they are positioning themselves and what they are doing. So you can also, if you know what their position is and you can also uh, front run them or uh, figure out what the next move is based on what their position is. So mm -hmm. how's that, how is that like? It's almost like getting it back to the man. Right. So all these dealers are Stick kind of the like man. the big boys and they're always like the ones like, we, you know, the retail people feel are just taking advantage of them. And now we're getting it back. Right. We're going to take it. Right. Yep. I love it. Yeah. I okay. mean, yeah, if, if any of, if any of you uh, 
Wall Street bets people want to come on. You, you find out what the dealer's positions really are. Come on in. <laughs> right. Yeah, so we have um, an idea of that. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Right. Right. Um, so that was variance risk premium. I just explained that. In the last mm -hmm. episode, we explained uh, gamma hedging in that uh, in order to hedge their risk, these dealers buy and sell the underlying in SPX, it would be the ES futures or, yep. you know, however they hedge, they hedge with the equity itself. And we showed how when dealers are in a gamma crunch, they have to hedge in certain ways very quickly. Um, since the most popular dealer position is they are short out of the money puts and long out of the money calls. This is why they say, you know, you take the elevator down and the stairs up in the market. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, be that's because of option dealers. They are gamma hedging and they are selling a ton when the market goes down because they don't want to be caught in that convexity that you're making money off of if you have an out of the money put. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is, so that is explaining those two dynamics of the market, but how do we explain the slow increase in the market as time goes on? Is that the option dealers as well? Or is that, who is that? And of course it's option dealers, as far as I'm concerned, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of it is because of this Vanna hedging. Okay. And what Vanna is, is the relationship of volatility to Delta. Okay, stop. So what is that? All right. The relationship of volatility. To, so as volatility changes, is this a 1% increase in volatility? Is that how they measure it? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so on a 1% on a change in volatility, what does the delta of an option do? That is the sort of the definition of Vanna. Right, and the reason okay. why that's important to us mm -hmm. is delta, again, is the amount of shares of the underlying that you need in order to hedge your position. Okay. So if volatility has any impact on that delta, yep. you need to know that in order to know what in order to assess what the dealers are going to do with the underlying. Okay, got it. Right. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, so there are two things that actually affect premium of the options, and the first one I'm just going to kind of gloss over because it's um, has less of an effect, and that is time, because options have a time component, an underlying component, and then this variance or volatility component. Mm -hmm. the t as time goes on, the theta. Um, usually it burns options. Mm -hmm. And as the premium declines, so does the delta. I'm sure anybody who is tuning into this has probably bought a naked call or a naked put out of the money, uh, expecting to be millionaires tonight. And you just learn that as time is going on, that put is just declining in value, even though the underlying maybe even went down mm -hmm. a little bit, but just not enough. Right. And it keeps going down, down, down until it burns to zero. Um, you see that that time, it's specifically called charm. That time as the premium declines, so does the delta. That 20 mm -hmm. delta put without even any movement of the underlying reduces to five delta in just you know a few days or depending sure. on when your yep. when your expiration is. And that and that's that concept charm. is yeah, that concept concept is called charm. So or delta bleed, I've heard it referred to. Yeah. So as time goes on in this example, that, that options decaying, right? The premium in and of itself, but so right. is the, the Delta is tending towards zero. Okay. Right. Now, things can happen to change that. I, you know, with stock price movement, but that, that's the concept of that charm. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Um, now, statistically charm hasn't had much of an effect. So I kind of gloss over it a little bit and just mm -hmm. lump it into the whole volatility. Um, so in our first, in the first, first episode, even before we started doing this dealer hedging or this dealer positioning, um, I noted the SPX over VIX correlation, that very heavy correlation that SPX has to VIX. Mm -hmm. And as VIX, as SPX goes up, the volatility declines. So as you kind of, kind of gain from that Delta bleed uh, example that we just said, when the volatility declines, the Delta's Decline as well, particularly on the edge, uh, in the tails. That is like far out of the money. Um, those the volatility has more of an impact even than the gamma does mm -hmm. when it's yeah in that scenario. Okay, so we're talking about this point here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yep. 
Okay, good. Excellent. I'll, yep. I'll draw on the screen so people know what we're referring to. All right. Yep. <laughs> good deal. So the next point that's delta declines. So as the delta declines, you know, you're noticing the volatility is declining, mm -hmm. and then the delta declines along with it. Mm -hmm. Option market makers don't have to hedge their position as much, mm -hmm. so they end up buying the underlying little by little, and that's incrementally just kind of causing this upward drift in equities or even in any underlying that has heavy option volume. It just you see this upward drift as that volatility declines, both from an implied volatility standpoint and a time standpoint. Okay, so let's let me be let me let me say this because we had this problem too as as mar, as I was a market maker. So mm -hmm. long out of the money calls, we're, we're making that assumption. Mm -hmm. The dealers mm -hmm. short out of the money puts. Those yes. are long delta positions. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as time goes on or volatility changes, let's say it gets lower in this example. Okay. I'm getting less less of the negative delta put, which is my long. It's getting smaller. Mm -hmm. So that long, my long position is getting less. And my right. out of the money call is getting less delta, which is right. making me shorter, not as long. So to offset that, I've got to actually purchase maybe the underlying to replace those those decaying long deltas with something else. That's right. Okay. In both of those positions, both both, both of those positions are the greatest dealer positions yep. and they're both forcing you to push to to buy slightly off of your hedge yep right and because because and, and and don't forget um for the viewers stock doesn't it has a hundred delta so it doesn't decay stock it's right. always a hundred delta right so if we're using that as dealers to replace those those decaying bleeding options okay we're going to naturally have to push that stock a little higher yes okay sorry go ahead no, perfect. Um, so when I when you do the statistical analysis, the the diagram which you can box the top the top right hand corner there, yep, it looks very similar to that gamma diagram where the higher Vanna exposure, mm -hmm. the less volatile the market is. Okay. Um, but once those puts start going in the money, um, and that that Vanna exposure really can you know once those puts start going in the money if we start declining then you actually have to sell in order to yep make up your vanna so really vanna exposure and gamma exposure are very tightly wound together and as the market declines both impacts in the market sure really uh really can cause some vol volatility yeah so just so we're clear too so this um graph this part of the curve is the negative part of Vanna, right? Yes. Okay. And you can see how big the movement is in the underlying. So we're getting 10% moves. Here's even something probably 12 and a half percent move that one dot there. So yeah. you see the cluster of, of dots is, is um, uh, wider down in the negative Vanna parts. And notice right. as you get into the longer Vanna parts, how tightly wound that underlying movement is you don't you barely get to five percent i don't think a plus or minus right. maybe one gets kind of close um but that's that you know that's that's a very telling telling graph i think yeah again um kind of like gamma you can't really draw a um mm -hmm. a trend line because it's not it's heteroscedactic but uh you know it gets wider it's not like a uh did you just use a word that sounded like a dinosaur Yes. <laughs> okay. What the heck did that word mean? Heteroscedactic. All, right. All right. So whenever you do econometrics and you do uh, regression analysis, mm -hmm. uh, one of the assumptions in order to be able to effectively do it is something called homoscedasticity. Okay. And what that is, is the ability of, um, it, it's the, the dots have to be in a non-widening and not narrowing pattern. Okay. So it kind of has to be in a very, you know, almost has to be in like a tube or, you know, sure. okay. all around. So unlike you can't really one, do a trend line if it's not. Yeah. It unlike, this one is not, is the opposite of that. Right. Heteral. It gets wider okay. and wider and wider as time goes on. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Or it's, yeah. So anyway, um, combined. Now, the great thing is, is that, um, again, I use squeeze metrics for this. He's, he actually wrote a white paper on Vanna hedging and it's very, uh, very informative, but um, he has a thing where he shows how the Vanna exposure and the gamma exposure is additive. You can, it's just, you combine the effects of both and it mm -hmm. shows you um, where the dealers 
you know, are going to do at any given time. Right. And so he does it across the vol plane, the volatility plane, which is, uh, you know, uh, at any given time and at any given strike. So horizontally and vertically on the option chain. Okay. Is this the um, bottom graph? Yes. So what am I looking at? This is strike or level of the SPX. That's the level of the SPX. Okay. And across on the bottom yep. is showing you uh, the current, uh, the, the, the gamma volatility at this point in time. Like it's, it's uh, you know, like what the gamma volatility, gamma and vanna volatility is at. Okay. And then on the top. Yep, up here. Is realized, nope, uh, to the right. Oh, sorry. This this part here? Nope, more to the right. Oh, you mean this part here? Yes. Okay, right. What is that? Now, what so is what that? What that's showing you is the realized volatility. While that 17 on the bottom there is mm -hmm. the uh, current VIX mm -hmm. or volatility, that nine is the realized volatility. Mm -hmm. And those billions to the to the right there sure. is the Vanna plus gamma exposure. Got it. Okay. So you, you could see though when it gets to that zero billion, that that mm -hmm. break even spot, you could see it starts getting pretty red. Yeah. Okay. So what that chart there the big huge box there that uh that heat map shows you is all right so we have some white there it gets a little you know dicey down there in that mm -hmm. in that four thousand area down to 3800 yeah so it's down kind of and it starts getting red beware right. red because that means yeah that means we're going down and down hard right got it the white on the top there up here yes yeah um uh, this was going to, I was going to talk about this as my next point, which is volatility is higher the farther out in the tails that you go. This is called skew. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, there's that thing that called the volatility smile where, you know, it goes up uh, as you get low, as you get uh, farther out of the money and puts. Mm -hmm. And then from the money, it usually Trends down a little bit in calls, but then starts going up again. Right. So it looks like this. And, I'm gonna draw on the screen. It's kind of like yeah, go ahead. this, and it kind of you know it might tail off a little bit, but you know when you get to no bit at a penny, it's crazy high volatility. So right. Some, well, yeah, something that, like that. So this is let's call this at the money, right? Yeah. This is where your puts are. But usually, this is where yeah. Usually at the money is a little bit more to the left, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I kind of didn't draw that very well. I That's suppose. fine. That's I'm fine. I'm trying my best but to I'm draw just this tool. Know. Yeah, so yeah. there's at the money, something like that. Right. But okay. you know that the crazy high volatility out there in the tails, mm -hmm. you know, dealers are holding uh, open interest in those positions. Sure. And so as time moves on and as the uh, volatility drops, mm -hmm. that skew is the greatest contributor to the Vanna, to the Vanna positioning. Mm hmm as time goes on and, you know, mm -hmm. as you get closer to monthly expiration where most of the options are traded, um, you, you, that's very pronounced. You can kind of right. see, you know, that, that move up. So that white there on the top is when you start hitting that call skew, mm -hmm. you can tell that that van on the call side is beginning to have an effect as well. Mm -hmm. So, and that's really been a recent phenomenon. The call vana has been much higher. Mm -hmm. And the put vanna has been much lower, and it's kind of caused a little bit of a, a very a kind of a tense, uh, in you know, involatile time. Mm -hmm. But it's very tense there in the middle, and you right. can see that blue. The blue is kind of a, a thin stripe, yep. and it's almost like you know Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold. It's in the perfect spot. Yeah, that's and, this kind of section right in here, right? Yeah, and yeah. we've been kind of balancing on that balance beam for a little while now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, so it's kind of it's one of those things where you kind of have to be very careful being too long or too short. It's, you know, we're we're in a uh, we're in a precarious time. Mm -hmm. so, so could I be could I if, if volatility implied volatility were at a reasonably lower level, which you know at seventeen is not necessarily low in VIX, right? Um, but it's lower than we've seen. I mean, if it, I could be kind of what I would call backspread, long gamma here. Yeah. If, I'm, if I expect a you know kind of a a, a pretty big breakout move could be up could be down i don't care when i'm long gamma it doesn't matter to me um but i could take advantage of lower implied volatility with the x you know the hope that we're ready for a move here 
Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's kind of a balance beam and all you have to do is kind of fall on one side or the other mm -hmm. and you're going to see a large move. And we've seen, um, I, I guess it was last week or uh, a couple weeks ago when the uh, FOMC came out with mm -hmm. their, um, you know, they, they, they hinted that they're concerned about inflation and they hinted right. that you know, it wasn't really a big deal in most cases, but we kind of tipped off that balance beam a little bit and had yeah. a move that was a, more than what FOMC meetings usually have. Right. We bounced, but um, and we're kind of back on the balance beam now. But yeah, I don't think it'll take much, especially like an unexpected, you know, let's say this infrastructure uh, deal falls through and it's kind of like a little bit of a catalyst. Sure. But then you see that we get pushed off the, the balance beam and we're going to, we could, we could very well tumble pretty far. Mm -hmm. So what we need is in order to have better support is more put buying, but mm -hmm. yeah, right. <laughs> um, you need, yeah, you need, you need more people to be scared. I kind of say in the world of options, uh, hedging is bullish. Selling is bearish. Right. Right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But, That's a good point. Yeah, but um, so I'm going to in the next slide here, I'm going to show on Tradehawk what the um, kind of show a little graphic of what what it seems. So back when I did this, June 18th was four days away, and the mm -hmm. implied volatility was 10.99, almost 11. Okay. And so I wanted to show that green there on the put side, the 13 delta, um, that line right there is the two standard deviation line. Mm -hmm. So. It's 59 cents, and that's where that 13 delta is. Okay. Now, one month later, July 16th, you know, in the monthly options. Right. So, so I was trying to. He's there and he's there. So those are the two spots. Okay. Right. You can see that the implied volatility is up to 13.35. So it's considerably mm -hmm. higher. Right. And you could see where that 13 delta is. It is, it is well within that two standard deviation sure. line. Whereas the other one, it was on the two standard deviation line. Right. Yep. So you could see the impact of volatility. You know, you could visually see the impact of volatility on the delta. Right. So let me just draw it. So 13 delta, that's the 2SD line. Yep. 13 delta, that's the 2SD line in the July expiry. Right. Right. That's Jason's point there, pretty far away in the second version there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can see as, as the volatility decays over time, you're going to see that that 13 Delta is going to fly way up and over mm -hmm. that two standard deviation line pretty quickly. Yep. And that's what is that slow burn up that slow melt up right. in equities is that's what it's being caused by. Got it. Very cool. So, yeah. Um, so again, I, just to the action here, um, I put it in bold over here in the bottom, expect equities to have that upward bias. So long as Vanner exposure is positive. Mm -hmm. And then if it's negative, you have to expect volatility. Um, and what you kind of want to look at to eyeball it, you know, on a daily basis is you look 30 days out or, you know, you even look a week out or so mm -hmm. and look at what that skew is. And you could look in the vol workshop mm -hmm. um, on Tradehawk yep. and you can kind of eyeball the skew and you look even on this strip right here in the top of the option chain, mm -hmm. you could see IV goes up, down, up, down, up, down. And you can kind of gauge what the impact that is going to have on the dealer's position. Right. The reason why I usually stick with the monthly options is because those are where that's where the greatest open interest is still. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there tends to be more open interest now in weeklies as time as, uh, yep. as a lot of these, you know, as, as it becomes more part of the, the normal trading pattern, but right. it's still op most open interest happens then and on the quarter quarter end options yep okay understood cool this is great yeah nice. all right so that's what i got you got any questions lex well you know it's yeah i got I, I do let me let's let's stop sharing here let me so we can talk to each other for a second you yeah. can always go back if you need it so how, can we we can get we can make a sub greek like in trade hawk for instance we have all the mathematics so mm -hmm. is it would it be useful to have someone see um, his or her position in Vanna terms or not so much? Is it better to know what the dealers are doing? Yeah, it's better than to know what the dealers are doing because as, as someone, I mean, when I put on a position and I'm putting it on mm -hmm. for a different reason other than dealer 
positioning. You know, like let's say I think SPX is going to go up after this FOMC meeting or something like that. You know, yep. head and shoulders. I don't know. You know, trend line breaking. You know, whatever. If it's if there's some other reason why I'm putting on a position, I don't think Vanna of, of my position is going to help very much. Right. What I think needs to happen is there needs to be some kind of data feed into TradeHawk for what the overall gamma and vanna positions are in it and this is this might be something you might want to i could put you in contact with matt about um matt's yeah. squeeze metrics guy sure um, so that's interesting um so if i had it's it's derivable from 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 black shoals or cox rubenstein uh, yes. vanna so if that if that's the case we have it okay so mm -hmm. once we have it what we could do is we could take open interest along the strike chain mm -hmm. Right, and multiply it all out and come up with a let's call it a heat map for lack of a better term in Tradehawk that shows how that exposure exists. Okay, yes and no. Because then, I mean, then the question is how do you know that open interest, how much of it is bought and how much of it is sold? Well, we have to, we do have to make assumptions in this all the time, right? We have to yeah. assume that dealers have are short out of the money puts, long out of the money calls. In a stock like GameStop, that's not true necessarily. Right. Right. So I don't know how we have to come up with a method that, that gives us a better indication and, I, and it could be related to skew i guarantee you the the gme skew went from normal skew which is not mm -hmm. so normal to being inverted to the call side at, mm -hmm. at at some point so if we can measure all that together that's pretty interesting i've got i've got gme behind me actually but i don't know what the skew is going to be um so yeah i mean hey you know as we have the data so it'd be kind of interesting to see it yeah you know it's it's, it's um the data, I don't think, is necessarily the problem. I think it, what you need is that um, what you need is the uh, the formulas and stuff like that. And that's that's kind of where Matt steps in, yeah. um, and that's what he's doing with us for Magi. I mean, we we're doing an optimization thing with Matt's stuff versus mm -hmm. what the uh, implied volatility plane is, sure, and capturing that edge. Got it. Because cool. he actually doesn't do that assumption anymore. He used to, which is just assume that the dealers are short puts and long calls, but he doesn't do that anymore because he did this um, called the DDOI, which is like this, this um, median, you know, he, he can pinpoint where dealers are trading, you know, buying or trading their options and um, assumes that under the median, they are buying and above the median, they are selling. Mm -hmm. So there, so he can see all the, like the smallest pieces of, uh, right by bid bid ask edge and he's uh so he's able to see all of that and it's yeah kinda, that's pretty cool well yeah we'll figure that out I, i've got some yeah. ideas but that's good okay mm -hmm. awesome um jason thanks uh find jason at www.addamfunds a d d e u m funds.com yeah, spelled right here right behind him <laughs> um jason's going to be a semi-regular guest i think talking about some yeah. of these uh concepts so we we chatted about that before the show don't mm -hmm. forget to follow options brew tv please hit that subscribe give us a like always appreciate it and we will have more from jason uh upcoming so stay tuned sound yeah. good jason sounds great lex good seeing All right, you man. thanks again bye now bye